Hi everybody, welcome to today's edition of the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm Sean Woodland with Pat Sherwood and Tommy Marquez. 15.4 is history for the women, and since the beginning of the Open, we've been keeping an eye on some new names and new faces, and we were wondering, are they legit, or did they just put up one good score, and are they going to fade? And 15.4 showed us that a lot of these women are indeed for real. One of those new names and faces that I was the most excited about was Sarah Sigmund's mm -hmm. daughter, and she is legit, currently sitting fourth worldwide in the open. Can't wait to see her throw down in Europe. Sam Briggs is gone, but hey, Sarah Sigmund's daughter is going to take that spot. Yeah, Sigmund's daughter had back-to-back -to -back top five finishes now in the open. She was fourth place in 15.4, but the woman who wins it all is Kristen King, and she's been all over the map this open. Gets her first win of the open. 15.1 was her prior best finish. That was 49th, and then she was 3,757th in 15.1A. And to tell us more about Kristen King, let's send it over to Tommy Marquez. Thanks, Sean. Yesterday we broke down Jacob Anderson's winning score in 15.4, but the North Central's Kristen King score, when you compare it to her peers, may even be more impressive. Now, the average female score for 15.4 was 34 reps, but here's where it gets interesting. Kristen averaged five times as many reps per minute and completed the first tiebreak threshold a full five minutes and 22 seconds faster than the average female. And that's important because it was only an eight minute workout. She was the only female to finish the round of 27 handstand push-ups, and she beat second place Michelle Latondra by more than 10 reps. So Sean, I think after this workout, we can safely name her the handstand push-up queen. As far as the fittest region for the women goes in 15 point, Four. The top seven regions all averaged more than 47 reps. Southeast led the way with 49.8. Southeast, Southern California, and Southwest, the three regions that were above an average of 49 reps. Now let's go back to the 15.4 leaderboard, and Tommy mentioned her, but that's Michelle Latondra. She finished second. She's gotten nothing but better each week during the Open, and not a surprise she did well in this workout, given what we all saw her do at the games and push-pull. She's having a fantastic Open. If you're new to the sport, maybe you don't know her name. She's been around for a while, four times games competitor. Last year had her best finish, which was fourth place. Currently sitting first in her region, which is Canada East. And she's such a fighter. The last four years in a row, she has battled for one of only two qualifying spots from that region to the games. And every year she's had to battle with, maybe somebody you've heard of, Camille LeBlanc Bazinet. So Michelle is no stranger to a tough fight. She put up 167 repetitions on 15.4. And to kind of paint the picture of what that looks like for us regular mortals, she was 14 reps into the round of 27 Ooh. handstand push-ups. So she did all right. Yeah, and as a result, Michelle Latondra moves up the overall leaderboard. She was ninth last week. She sits in sixth place overall with just one workout to go. But the leader continues to be Camille leblanc Bazinet, who now has a 29-point lead over Annie Thoris' daughter. So barring a disaster here in the fifth and final week, it looks like Camille leblanc Bazinet is going to win the Open for the first time in her career. And we caught up with her, and she said, yeah, that's great. It's a great way to start the season. But she knows that winning the Open is just the first step, and it guarantees her absolutely nothing. I think that winning the Open is important. It's the first time with the Open that we're all of a sudden starting to compare ourselves again. So definitely, like, you don't know what the other girls are doing through the full year, and uh, you kind of trust your program and trust what you're doing to, to keep you at the top. I mean, we're all competitor, and it's just important to try to win all the time. <laughs> When this all started, we had two questions about Camille leblanc Bazinet. The first, how would she handle the pressure? The second, how could she deal with the fact that she has a huge target on her back, and so far she has passed with flying colors here? She's handling everything like an absolute champion. It's kind of like if you are a sports fan, your local sports team starts to have a good run, how exciting it is. If you're a Camille leblanc Bazinet fan, these are great years for you. <laughs> She's come into her own. She won the games last year. She is now dominating the Open and looks like she could take the games again this year. And since we first saw her start to compete in 2010, I mean, she's an entirely different athlete. She's matured with her, her physical capacity. Her mental state is rock solid. She's an absolute weapon, better in every aspect. And how is this for goals? She also, 
on top of being incredible mm -hmm. at CrossFit, is an incredibly talented Olympic lifter. She wants to qualify to go to the Olympics in the 58 kilo class for weightlifting, go to that and the games in the same year. Well, she's in no danger of missing regionals, that's I for sure. I don't but think so. Yeah, going into the final week of the Open, there are some games veterans who have their work cut out for them if they want to make it to the next stage. If you're you know, 20 to 25th, Chances are you have a chance at going because you don't know how many people in that top 20 you're going to go team. You might get bumped up. That's speculation. But if you're 25th and below, you know, you're going to have a very tough week and you may end up doing whatever 15.5 is, you know, two, three, four, yeah, times. a lot of times. This would be my advice to an athlete that's kind of on the bubble. Crazier things have happened in the past of athletes that were like, there's no way they're going to go, and they go. It depends what the workout is, how many people go teams. This last workout could be great for you and bad for somebody else, so don't give up yet. Do your best. There's still a chance for everybody on the bubble. Yeah, and 15.5 will go down live, Las Vegas, Nevada. It is going to be Annie Thorosauter, Sam Briggs, Camila Blanc, Bazinet, and we mentioned the close of the leaderboard. We're going to be live while that's going on next Monday at 5 p.m. Pacific time, so while you're clicking refresh, Click over, watch us. We're going to update the leaderboard and have all the latest scores. For Tommy Marquez, Pat Sherwood, I'm Sean Woodland. We'll see you guys next time.